two on the page. Mm -hmm. So there is a trick, not a trick, but it's a rule. And what it is is if you can remember that the three, the negative three that's in front of LN, can come up as an exponent because it's in front of. So it would be e to the ln of two to the negative three. Okay. When the E and the ln are touching, they kind of disappear. So, what is left? 2 to the negative 3, which is 1 over 2 to the third, which is 1 over 8. I got to remember the E and the ln. The E and the ln have to touch. Only if they're touching. Only if they're touching. If there's something in between. Right. No go. Right, no go. But we made, we made it okay when we moved that up there. So, do you see E, ln, or ln? Yes. I have a question on this worksheet, like one of the questions. Yeah. It was um, like number seven on sample problems. Yeah. You want to do that one? Yeah. Easy exercise. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So integration by parts. What do I do? I think about. I know it's integration by parts because there's two completely different x's there, right? Yes. Well, you can't use tabular method because one of them can't be derivable to zero. Correct. So if I look at this, e to the x will never be zero. e to the x is derivative of e to the x, whose uh -huh. derivative is e to the x, right? And then sine is derivative of sine is cosine. And then just keep going back and forth. It kind of toggles back and forth between positive negatives and sine yeah. and cosine. Yes. So does that... Uh, the exponent thing works with e too, or is it just ln? Like the negative three. Well, like if I have the ln of of e, they they I know, but does like if, like if we had instead of in place like of ln, if you had e. like that, yes. Could you do the same thing? No, because okay. because you can't. You can't take this three and bring it up as an exponent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I was wondering if I don't. I don't know what you were. I, yeah. Yeah. And it would actually be like ln of of x e to the whatever or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, so what do we do here? I have to use a u and right. So u du dv. And B. All right. Now, if if you come across this scenario, it's kind of hard to figure out which one you want to. I put the X and the U, but I can't seem to get the right columns. Okay, so why did you not, why were you not able to come up with an answer? Tell me what happens. Uh, I don't know, I just I seem to get sine plus cosine, but that is not. Yeah, that's what I was getting, a sine and a cosine. You were getting a sine and a cosine? And yeah. it's one half, uh, it's supposed to be like sine with a one half e of x sine minus cosine. Mm -hmm. So, that's a really good question. So which one do you call? So. Let's look at it. Let's see if we make this to be, is that what you did? Yeah. Okay. And then this. Right? And then this. So far so good. And what is its integral? Uh, mm -hmm. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. So uv, let's kind of explore. uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so would you agree with me that that negative comes out to make a positive mm -hmm. of V D U, right? Yeah, that's what I have. And then you're like, well, shoot. Yeah. I'm there again. Right? You have to do it again. Okay. Yes. So what's the point of writing DV if you're not going to use it in the equation? Um, remember, it is part of the original equation. You utilize it to get to the V. Right. So you're, you take that and that's its derivative like and you bring it back. These are the two things that are given. Yeah. These are the two things you find. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. One you derive, one you integrate. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so 
So let me let me write this down for a minute. E to the x sine x equals that stuff. Do you agree? Yeah. Just kind of showing my work myself. Because <coughs> um, I know I'm going to have to go over there. Okay, so now, seriously, I've got a problem because I'm back to base, I'm back to stage one, right? Yeah. So let's go ahead and say, all right, well, let's use the same kind of concept here. We have a U, right? We have a DU. We have a DV. And we have a V. Are we good? Yeah. So we're going to do U is also E to the X again. And DU is E to the X DX. Okay, DV is cosine DX. Well, hush, here we go, cosine. Now what? What's the integral of cosine? Sine. Is it positive sine? Yeah, the derivative yes. sine is cosine, and the integral is sine. Okay, good, sine. Mm -hmm. Just making sure, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so let me, I have to come over here because I, I need more room. All right, so I have the integral of e to the x sine x is equal to. Alright, it's equal to negative e to the x cosine of x. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then um, plus uv minus integral v to u again, right? So you, is everybody okay with what I just said? So yeah, so u v, right, minus the integral of v, so far okay, du. Well, got it. So far, does that make sense what I did? Wait, why is there a um, plus u x sine a? Okay, so this gets rewritten. Yeah. And then now I have to start over. So this is u v oh. minus an equal oh. u. Well, we got a dilemma. Okay. Again? It's, it brings us back to the beginning, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. So, cool trick. We, what are we actually trying to solve for? We're trying to solve for this guy, right? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to add it over here. So I have 2 integral e to the x sine x equals negative e to the x cosine x plus are you with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I'm trying to solve for this. Uh -huh. So I don't want two of them. Divide everything by two. So e to the oh, x. Oh, that's equal to one half. Yeah. Sine x equals. So one half of negative, and I'll we'll clean it up slowly. So far, okay. <laughs> oh, so you just add it to the other side because you're trying to get rid of it. Right. You add it to the other side because it's where we started. So if you do it twice and it still doesn't work out, that's when you do that's that. That's when you do this. Okay. Right. If it matches what you're trying to find in the first spot. Okay. So you're going to add it over there, and then I think the final answer, they pulled out the e to the x. Yeah, it is. And then they kind of flip flop these guys. Yeah. So it would be one yeah. half, and then e to the x, and then I'd rather have positive sign out front, minus cosine, and then you're done. Yes. What happens to the integral of e to the x sine of x? That's the actual value. That's like so. That is equal to that. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, so you're that's solving for that. okay. How do you know when to go back and do the um, the process again? Like, okay, so I know. The U and the D of v. Can somebody else answer that? When do you know to go back and do it again? Yes. All right. So when you do that. Uh, integration by parts, you end up with two pieces, the uv and the integral of vdu. If that vdu, when you have to integrate that, ends up being something you can only do by integration by parts, just like as if it were its own problem, then you got to do it again. Okay. Does that make sense? Good. I was hoping that, I mean, because I could say it again and again, although my voice is very melodic. Um, I know that other people's voices sometimes help. You can't break it down. Anymore. You can't break it down, so uh oh, let's start again. Because right. you're usually supposed to just be able to integrate it, right? just like. Yeah, normally, 80% of the time when we get this part, we're like, oh, cool, we can integrate it now, and we move on. Sometimes it puts a little hitch where you do one more time and, and you can integrate it. This is the prime example of one time that you won't be able to. 
it'll go on as a circle forever. So you notice that what you get is what you started with. And so you can handle that. This, I, I love to show this when I was teaching AP Calculus because to me, it kind of, if you make sense of this, you get integration by parts. If you make sense of this, if you can wrap your head around this type of concept, I it was. It. It's just Sure, and are you going to see it? Probably not. I mean, I love it, but are you going to see it on an, on an ACE exam? Most likely not. The only number we have You like it that two. much, huh? I get it. <laughs> the only number we have is two. This, well, this whole test, I believe, is integration by parts. That's all we've done, right? I mean, this no. chapter? Oh, no, it isn't. Darn it. We've done differentiation. We've done a lot of stuff. Regular integration. You're going to see different. You're going to see it. We should make it integration. We should not. <laughs> yes. So how can we use product rule right here? We have negative e to the x cosine of x plus e to the x sine of x. We're not, we're not deriving. We're integrating. Right. But, but I mean, I thought you just had uv, like, we had it twice. Okay, this was the original uv. Right. We have to do it a second time. That's the second uv. Then we have the integral part. You have to keep adding it on? Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm going to run to the restroom real quick because I had uh, Julie in here, Ms. Wagner in here for a few minutes to talk to me about something. So pick another one. Um, somebody can erase the board. That's why I wrote comp two. Remember the So you had E sign of it? Okay, and then you bring it up, brought it out front. Okay. I skipped the stuff when it came to pulling out the we lost because of director bias. So, so this is number 11, sample problems? Yes. Uh, how should we go about this one? Well, if it was a derivative, we would probably think quotient rule, but... Yeah. Maybe we bring it to the... <laughs> flippy flop it up top? Yeah, flippy yeah. flop it. And then reverse chain rule you said the people flippy flop top? it up yes. top. Is there any other thing we can do? No. We can do the thing that comes to mind. She's ominously standing in the background, so. Well, I'm looking at it. If I fold it out, it would be x and 4. Right? So it's bigger on the bottom, so you can't divide it out. Yeah. Very good. Foil it. And then do the individual pieces. Like you put can't that break up. the bottom up. Yeah. yeah. So, I think this might be a I don't know if I've taught you that yet. Oh, all right, then then. You didn't have it out with? What do you mean? I don't think so. No. I'm thinking in my mind how I would do it, and I haven't taught you how you to do it. You can't take this. And, and, and then get. You, you could, but it wouldn't be a UDU situation. Yeah. Oh, oh. Can you teach us the way you have a process yet? No. No, I don't want to. Sorry, not 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 before this test. No. Why wouldn't it be that way? What's the difference between that coming up? Oh, because that's also the right. This is not that common thing, right? That we see. Can't do that one. No. Okay. Don't. Don't do this. Is this on the worksheet? No. One to K. So this is just kind of theoretical. This was in 2007. This was a four-point question. This was the only part of the question. The question says, can you find the value of k for which, can you find the exact value of k for which the integral from 1 to k of 1 over 2x minus 1 dx equals 1? Okay, so you can. Okay, so let's talk a little bit before we get all involved with the K, because we're going to get all nervous because there's a K in there, and we're going to go, I can't do it, because there's a K, and she never taught me a K. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm there, I get it, but what I want you to do is I want you to, yes, oh, go ahead. Can't we multiply the top by 2 and make it a UD situation? I love you, you can, That's because well. your brain goes like this, number one, is it a fraction, yes or no, yes. if not, right, if yes. First thing you should look at, potentially do I have du over u, mm -hmm. right? Do I? If I have a du over u situation or something that I can make a du over u situation, 
That's what I want to do. So if I look at the denominator and I take a derivative of it, what do I get? Two. I get a 2. Well, I'm very close to having 2 over that. What do I need on top? Two. I need to put a 2. And pull out one half. Right. So I'm going to take this guy, put a 2, pull out a 1 half. And then you just do that uh, ln thing. Absolute value. Yes. See you guys on so it. So 1 half ln 1 2x, half ln the absolute value of 2x minus 1 plus 8, right? Um, we have an a and b. Oh, a and b. Got it. Right. Okay. So, yes. So isn't it like if you don't have a du over u situation, what's the next thing that you resort to? Uh, we've got to talk, we were going to talk about that, right? We, we started to say we were going to talk about that. Um, so right, that's what we're going to do Wednesday. Right, that's our game plan. So if it's, if it's not du over u, then I've taught you multiple different ways to take intervals. Mm -hmm. Another way we did it, we flipped the bottom up and said, could it be a u, d, a u substitution type of thing, right? Where they're mm -hmm. right next to each other and it's something that might work. If that doesn't work, could it potentially be integration by parts? Okay, there's multiple different things that you will learn how to take intervals of. I have now just scratched the surface with you guys. You know what I'm saying? I've given you like maybe three, maybe four different potential ways. There are so many different things that you're gonna learn on integration. I'm hmm. just giving you some arsenals, you know, for your toolbox. Okay, so now we're back to this. If I have one half ln of two x minus one, um, I know, yes. Where does the ln come from? When I take an integral, it's a du over u. The integral of the, um, sorry, of du over u is by definition the absolute value, the n of the absolute value. It's okay. one you need to know. We'll see if you don't have AB. Right. But now I say, oh goodness, I'm done. So I'm going to evaluate it from 1 to k. Mm -hmm. And what is my result supposed to be? Oh, it's supposed to be 1. They're giving me the answer. So literally what they want us to do is they want us to plug k in, okay, minus plug 1 in, and then set it equal to uh, the 1 we can try to solve for. So, so far, now that we've seen this problem, is, is this a problem that we should have walked away from? No, because no. we saw k. No, not at all. I see, I see an integral and I see a fraction. So I see maybe I can do this. Okay, so now I have one half the natural log of 2k, 2K minus 1, right? Minus one half the natural log of 2 times 1 minus 1. And that's going to be equal to 1 to the end. And that means that k has to be, well, we'll find that positive. It's going to end up being positive. It's going to be positive. The element of 1 is 0, correct? The element of 1 is 0. So what is this guy here? Zero. 2 minus zero. 1 is 1, ln of 1 is zero. 0. So this is minus 0. Yes. I got this. So I have 1 half the natural log of 2k minus 1 equals 1. Does that make sense what I just said? We multiply it by 2. Multiply both sides by 2. So ln um, of the 2k minus 1 equals 2. Now. I haven't taught you this yet, I don't think. How do I get rid of an ln? What did I tell you? What do I tell you is e. the ln's kryptonite? E. It's the e, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. X so the e. it's actually I'll show you how it works. So this is kind of from the next chapter. So obviously we won't be doing this. It's one of the next chapters, but you'll have a head start. I told you that when ln and e touch each other, they get rid of each other. So the way we do it is. Um, E it. I could sing you the song, just E it, and I will oh, do it. We're going to do E. Just, yeah. <laughs> we're going to E. We're going to E both sides. So we're going to do E to this power and E to that power. That's mm -hmm. Gosh. If I do it to the both of the same side, if I do it to both sides, to both sides I haven't changed anything. Mm -hmm. And you know, E and ln, we've we've accomplished this goal where we see how they you know get rid of each other so what do I have left 2k minus 1 e squared equals e squared and then yeah. now because now it just has to be now yeah yeah so we have 2k equals e squared plus 1 so you can drop, you can drop e squared plus 1 over 2 so what what 
talk, talk to me. I didn't hear your question. The you can just value. draw when they touch each other like that. Mm -hmm. You draw the, the uh, absolute value. The absolute value, though. Yeah, because now it's positive. The ln's gone. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. okay. But what if? Yeah. So whenever you're solving an equation with, with ln, you know that you can do e to all that and e to all that. Right. Right. So you just leave it like that? Right. right. So if, there's an, if you're trying to get rid of ln, it's just like adding to get rid of the minus sign. You just add or multiply by e. Right. Sort of. Let me show you. Let me show you something. Like if I have ln of x equals 3, right? Mm -hmm. I told you a little way to, sh to look at it that you could do the little e that powers that. Mm -hmm. But if I use the same kind of concept, if I e it, no, I'm not going to dance anymore. If I e both sides, right? If I e it or e it, mm -hmm. the ln and the e cancel, I have x equals e to the third, which makes sense. My little e to the third is x. Yeah. Two different ways to get there. Wow. I like that one. It's very cool. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of like when you have, when you square both sides. Mm -hmm. Same thing, yeah. same concept. Square root both sides, square both sides. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do to both sides, as long as you do it to both sides. Yes. Mm -hmm. What if I had e to the x is 4, and I want to figure out what x is? You can bring x to the front? No. Or no? No, I can do that. If it's an ln. If there's an ln. Right. So what can I do to both sides? Ln, LN both okay. sides. So Ln both sides. And then the L and the E are touching. So they cancel. Mm -hmm. So what's left? There's your answer. Cool. So um, ACT, you sometimes will come across things that look like this. It is the X. We're there. Take you take it Saturday. I just gave you an advantage. Because this right here is definitely, um, just know if there's an E, L in it. Both sides. Yeah. Okay. If there's an L, E it. E it. That means bring it to a power. You have to sing it when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to think you're crazy, but. Yeah. Yeah. And so the L in and the E went away? Yeah, because they touch each other. I thought it was only if it was like. Expo an well, any way, shape, or form. If I'm going to be really technically savvy about it, I'm going to show you the steps. The X is going to come to the front, mm -hmm. right? And ln of E. So the X would come to the front. I'd have ln of E equals ln of 4, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what do we know about ln of E? It's equivalent to one, one whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have X equals, and that's times 1. Or I could divide both sides by that. Still, it's 1. So ln is like just oh, just under one half, right? Isn't e like two point something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. E is two point seven ish ish ish. Yeah. Yes. Say okay. So okay. if there was like an ln of x that's equal to three over e to the x, mm -hmm. and would, you want to solve for x, would the <laughs> e and the ln x or the ln you have too many X's going on. So, um, or, okay. So if we E to the X, if the E has an X, it doesn't cancel. You have too many, you have too many X's going on. You have to factor it out somehow. I'm not certain, I'm not certain to work. Okay. <coughs> Until there's no X here, then you can do it. You okay. can make it work. You could E it both sides. So you would have E to the ln of X equals E to the E to the third. Well, or, no, e, e to the three well, over E. e. Yeah. So could you also um, multiply you just by E yeah. and also by the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Because no. it's being divided. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'll eventually get you to the same spot. All right, cool, yes. Why don't you erase the little x when it's 3 over e to the x? You can't do it. We can't, mm -hmm. we can't. We can't do it right now. We, we can't do it right now. 
Okay, let's get you one to do without me. I think I did that. I did the one that um, we had L of X dx equals, and then we had to figure out what U and DV were. Did we finish it? No, we didn't finish it. So it looks like. This is not on the packet. No. no. These are actual test so, questions. We yeah, finished that one. one. We finished it? Did we? No, no, we didn't. Where? No? We didn't finish it. No? It's a no. Do you have it written down? Yes. No. No, that's fine. That was another question. So that's a no. We finished it? Yes or no? No, we didn't. Okay. So. You can't integrate it. You can't integrate it. So it has to be U. U. So the derivative is 1 over x. Yes. Dx. Um, this is the one where we have dx as the dg. Can you explain why? Because it's, cool. it's a 1 dx. Yeah, it's actually 1 dx. dx. Yeah. So just 1 dx. Mm -hmm. And what is the integral of 1 dx? X. x. So we're good? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have u, v, x ln of x, minus the integral of v, du. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Remember this now is just going to kind of go for the ride. Yes. This, we clean up a little bit. So what's x times 1 over x? 1. 1. one. Okay, so what's the integral of 1? x. x. So well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so x ln of x, right? And then we said that's a 1, so its integral is x, right? From 2 to 4. Yeah, we have ln 4 times 4 minus 4 minus ln 2 times 2 minus 2. Something like that. You can write it like that, too. Ln 2. 2 at, uh, not x. We don't want to leave any more x's in there? Yeah. I'm just kidding. I just, I don't know why I did that. It's all right. Okay, so ultimately, if I clean her up a little bit more, I got 4 ln of 4, minus 4, minus 2 ln of 2, plus 2. Yeah. And ultimately, this is my goal. You with me? Mm -hmm. So I, I got, I'm gonna, look, I got this and this, I got the minus 2. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo. And I know that my result has to be ln of 2, has to have only ln of 2 in it. So I see, I'm just going to write this down, 4 ln of 4, and then minus 2 ln of 2. Life is good with this guy here. It's already ln of 2. You with me? Not so good with this guy here. So what do I do? Do you split it out? No, you don't split. Factor out of 2. Not factor out. Yeah. You turn the 4, the ln of 4, into 2 squared. So this is 2 squared. Nice. And then you bring the two to the front. And then yeah. you can bring the two to the front to become four. Which is six. Or eight. close um, to six. Yeah, right? very, very close. I know where I'm going. I know where you're going. You bring the square to the front of them. Because we know yeah. we know the rule that the exponent with an ln can come to the front. And now we have the same thing for ln of two and ln of two. Right. And we can subtract that from the So we have six of those guys. Eight of them minus two, right? Yeah. Hey there. So we have six of them minus two. Yeah, I thought so too. Um, are we going to have the problems that we're doing today on our test or the problems that we were doing? Well, it's going to be, we've kind of mixed and mingled. Yesterday we had a little bit of multi, like, product rule. I was just going to flip into that right now. Yeah. Um, so it's going to have product rule. I'll tell you, I'll pull the test up and should tell you what's on it. Okay. Thank you. Can I raise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got on video. Got so it on video.
So when are we going to have the test? This says, um, it's a picture of a whoosh, again, you know, they've all been that kind of whoosh. And it has M as the maximum point at the top of the whoosh, okay? Mm -hmm. So the question part I um, for four points says, find the X coordinate of M. So it wants me to find the maximum point. Take the derivative, set to zero, find X. Mm -hmm. Take the derivative, set it to zero. So for X. Plug X back into the original and solve for Y. That's right. So yeah. we got this under control. We know our steps. So easier said than done. Yes. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, what rules do we have to utilize here? The E of X we need. The derivative of the X term or U in the numerator. We're not integrating. We're deriving. We're deriving. Derivating. We're derivating. Yeah. Yes. I noticed three things. So you can rewrite the square root as to the one half. I would agree. So and yeah. So it's, take this guy and then put it to the one half. And put it to the one half. And then the other two things is that since there are two things multiply, you have to use product rule yes. and also chain rule for one plus two x to the one half. Right. Let's talk. Let's reason through that again. Because we're trying to find the maximum point, it's take a derivative. It's two things multiply are two separate uh, entities all together, yeah. like an f and x and a gx. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I know I can use the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. What Nick also recognized is this guy right here, when I derive it, I have to use chain rule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what, like what you might see on the test. So when they mix and match, you got to just bite the bullet and make it ugly. So, the derivative of the first. So we're going to call this guy first, this guy second. So what's the derivative of the first? So the derivative of e to the u mm -hmm. is e to the u, e to the u du. Mm -hmm. So that means rewrite, right? And then what's the derivative of its exponent? Uh, negative one half. Yeah, so that's yeah. the derivative of the first. Okay times a second. Mm -hmm. So far so good? Yes. Plus the first. Derive. Derive. Chain rule. That's what Nick told me to do. Mm -hmm. So how do I do chain rule? I take the one half. Bring it to the front. Bring it to the front. Rewrite the junk from the inside. Subtract one whole. Negative one half. Okay. And, and then, then the derivative two. of the inside. The derivative of the inside is two. 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 And, and that cancels out, out with the one. Two cancel out. Good. We're going to do that. So, so far, are we all on the same page? Mm -hmm. So was the derivative okay? We got through that process. We understand it. We, we, so from last year to this year, what's new? Mm 